Well, thank you for joining us for another time in the Word. My name is Pastor Chris Sakai. Hey, it's so great to be with you guys today. I want to welcome everyone who is listening on 90.1 FM and 104.9 FM, The Point, and also all of you who are watching on our YouTube and Facebook platforms. It's so good to be with you guys today. Uh, the title of today's talk is Unmasking Satan, and so we want to reveal uh, the lies of the devil here today. And if you've been following our Book of Acts series, this is going to be in Acts chapter uh, 19, so you can uh, feel free to, to go back and watch some of our uh, our other uh, videos on this subject um, at our platform, uh, Christopher Sakai, on YouTube. And you can also search us out on Facebook. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow all those dandy thing. So Acts chapter 19, uh, we're going to be reading in verse 11. We're going to jump right into this. And so it says, now God worked, like, so let's go back to verse 10. And it says, and this continued for two years so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jew and Greeks. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So this is outside of the ordinary, super awesome uh, miracles that were taking place. Um, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preached. And you kind of think how silly that we exercise you by the Jesus. You know, they had no, they had no relationship with Jesus. They weren't born again. They didn't have any concept. They kind of used it as a abracadabra uh, type of, of word. They had heard about Paul and, and other apostles who were casting out demonic spirits of people. And they're like, man, we are going to get in on this action. So no relationship, just trying to, to do this. And so it says, verse 14, also there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? And we had actually done a sermon on this topic uh, last week and go check it out. But this is crazy what happens here. It says in verse 16, Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So you got to understand, these guys, this was their job. They were exorcists. I mean, they were trying to cast out evil spirits, you know, and get paid for it. You know, they were a bunch of regular ghostbusters that just kind of went around and did this all the time. Lots of smokes and mirrors, you know, thought they were, were doing something, you know. But here, they, 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 they were not expecting this. For them to get beat up and jumped, all seven of them overpowered by this one guy who was possessed by a demon to the point where they left bloody, bruised, and naked. I mean, this was a shock for him, and we're going to see it was a shock to the whole community because they weren't ignorant to demon possession, but ignorant to the actual power of the devil and the actual power of a demonic influence here because I think in this instant, you know, God just maybe got allowed or maybe the demons were just getting so frustrated with what Paul was doing and, you know, they, they reacted the same way, but they definitely weren't behaving incognito. You know, they couldn't hide behind, you know, oh, maybe there's this, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's just in their mind. Maybe they're depressed or whatever. You know, maybe it's just a sickness. You know, they, they came out as a demon. I mean, they fully, this demon fully exposed himself here. And so it says in verse 17, this became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And so this event became known one that you could not manipulate the name of, of Jesus. That you could, that it was, that Jesus was not, you know, a magic word or a magic wand, you know, that, that Jesus was holy that he was set apart. You could not invoke the name of Jesus without a relationship with him. But also the power of Satan, uh, God exposed in this moment. And because of that, it, it shined a greater light on the work that, 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 that Christ was doing through the Apostle Paul and the church at this time. 
And it says in verse 18, I love this. It says, and many who believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. And the word of the Lord grew mighty and prevailed. And so this is an amazing thing that, that happens here uh, in this moment where, pe- where the enemy is revealed at this moment, and people all of a sudden... It's like, it's not just like a little sin, or it's not just a a minor addiction, or it's not just this thing I'm dabbling in. All of a sudden, the mask got revealed to the evil of what people were doing, that how uh, heinous uh, sin is and, and, and what the devil wants to do in and, and through people. It got exposed to where people came and confessed their sins. They repented of their sins. They wanted nothing to do with the demonic. They wanted nothing to do with, with you know, maybe those who were, believers didn't want anything to do with playing church anymore. They're like, I am all in. I don't want to expose myself uh, to this any longer. So they came and confessed their sins. They repented, meaning they, they turned away from sin. They even took all their, their magic books, and I, I don't even know what that looks like. I mean, I, I imagine it was just, you know, different things like, Today, maybe be like our, our self-help books, and, and there's also demonic books. Don't get me wrong, but they they were they anything that you know Reiki or or New Age or you know uh, anything that was that was people were going to to fulfill a need other than Christ. They like burned it all, and it, and the amount of money in today's in today's money would have been about a, a million to five million dollars worth of stuff. You might say, man, they should have sold that. No, they didn't want that evil to be transferred to anybody else. And I was just recently at uh, a tent revival and it was awesome when, when the the preacher gave, gave an altar call and he, he gave an, an amazing altar call. He said, listen, it's, don't just say this prayer, you know, don't just, you know, say a prayer and, and keep living life the way you are. You know, God has, has called us to, uh, to repentance. He's called us to, to holiness. You know, we don't earn it, but we, but God, it's a gift to us and says, we've got to put down all of our sin. He says, man, he says, if you've got tobacco products, if you've got alcohol products, you've got vape, drugs, bring it to the altar. Let's, we're going to repent and we're going to throw all this stuff away, man. And the altar was filled. People bringing cigarettes, bringing lighters, bringing vapes, bringing drugs. Man, this one guy came up, laid some drugs uh, on the altar and said, hold on a second, and I'm going to go to my truck. Came back with this garbage bag filled uh, of drugs. And people just just repenting uh, of their sins. And it was a be- beautiful thing uh, to see people uh, laying that, that stuff down, saying, I don't want this uh, in my life anymore. And so what happens here is that the devil was exposed. Now, the devil will, will deceive people in, in two different ways. One, he wants to be incognito wants to be in, invisible, wants to appear as the angel of light, wants to be somebody harmless or, or helpful. And, he, and he, wants to, he hides in the shadows that way. And so here the mask had been ripped off on how ugly and how evil the power of Satan is and put such a big contrast between the devil and what it was to live a life of freedom and holiness in Christ because of the blood of Jesus. It was just exposed here in Acts chapter 19. But the same thing is true is where sometimes the enemy wants to appear uh, tougher than he really is, more powerful than he, he really is and wants to intimidate people, especially wants to intimidate believers into thinking that he has more authority and more power. Now, the, let me read a verse here in, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, 
for God was with him. Now, that's, if you are a born-again believer, this same Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. The Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 1, the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father and gave him authority over every principality, every power, every demonic spirit, every ruler. You know, all of this was placed under his feet. That same power dwells in inside of you and I. This is the authority that God has given us to set the captive free and to heal those who are oppressed by the devil, to see them healed in Jesus' name. Now, the enemy wants to seem like more powerful than he is sometimes, but here the reality is that in Christ, you are, you are seated in Christ far above every principality, every power. God has given you authority. Now, what does this word oppression mean? This means that even in a Christian's life, non-believer in a believer's life, the enemy can, can operate in their life. Now, in a non-believer, you know, the enemy, the enemy, can, if, they, they, if the non-believer gives him access, you know, he has full permission to do whatever he wants. And a believer, the same thing is true, though. Even though the believer is owned by God, filled with the Holy Spirit, if that believer, if that Christian, that born-again Christian, is ignorant to his authority in Christ, ignorant to his position in Christ, the enemy can gain access to oppress that believer. Now, what is that word? Not to not to make it spooky, but what does that that mean? Oppression. All it means is that is a person who who takes authority over another person um, uh, illegally. Like say, if you oppress, like slavery was oppression. You know, there was a one human being oppressing another human being. You know, stepping over their authority. You know, and 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 putting another person down. And for us, we've been set free. And so the enemy wants to come and strong arm us. He wants to manipulate us. And he can only do that when we don't understand our authority or when we open up our ourselves through sin and disobedience. And so this is why these guys in the book of Acts chapter 19, they're like, you know what? We're going to throw everything away. We're, we don't want anything in our lives that gives access to the devil to manipulate us in any way possible. And so I just want to encourage you today, you know, number one is know who you are. If you're a born again believer, know who you are in Christ. Don't let the devil, you know, take advantage of you. Don't give the devil authority in your life. He's been unmasked. To you, the Bible says the thief comes in to steal, kill, and destroy, but God has come that you may have life and life more abundantly. He may want to come in and steal, kill, and destroy, but you have been given abundant life in Christ. You've got to know that about yourself. You've got to believe that about yourself. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Don't doubt your position in Christ. Don't doubt the inheritance that God has given you. You are no longer bound by sin. You're not, you, you should not identify as a sinner any longer. You are now a saint of God when you're born again. You're a son of God. When you see yourself as royalty, when you see yourself as a son, when you see yourself as a warrior, as a champion in Christ, the enemy can't have any position, any, any power over you. When you see yourself wearing the badge in Christ, you just like a police officer has authority, you have that authority over Satan. Now, if you're like, man, I don't have that, I, you know, well, then I want to encourage you, get saved. Become born again today. And then get filled with the Holy, and baptized in the Holy Spirit of God. How do you become born again? You've got to believe and confess that Jesus is Lord. So if you believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins, paid your sin debt in full, in full, and confess Jesus Christ as your King and your Savior, the Bible says you're born again. So I want you to, I want to help you by saying a, a prayer um, to, to help help you um, walk in this, but you've got to believe and you got to confess and so say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to the earth to die on the cross to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus paid my sin debt in full. I repent of my sins. I choose to leave the family of darkness and come in to the family of light. I confess Jesus Christ as the King and the Lord of my life. Amen. If you said that prayer, the Bible says that you are now in the family of God. If you believe that, have confessed him as Lord. And it says all of heaven is rejoicing. 
And this preacher is rejoicing with you as well. I want to encourage you to find a good church, a good faith-believing, Bible-preaching church. And if you live in the Frederick County, Winchester, Virginia area, I want to encourage you to come to Spirit and Word Fellowship. We're located at 1275 Tasker Road in Stephen City, Virginia. Hey, love you guys. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day.